good afternoon everyone welcome to agri addict a platform for all agricultural exams we are introducing the course for the icr jrf entomology and nematology 2024 my name is bimal kumar sahu i have completed my graduation from odisha university of agriculture and technology bhubaneswar and masters from central agricultural university imphal and currently i am pursuing my phd in agricultural entomology in tamil nadu agricultural university coimbatore i have secured the first rank as well as the gold medal uh, from the central agricultural university imphal in the year 2022 in my pg career and i have also cleared the as admit in agricultural entomology in 2022 so we have uh, the top mentors from the uh, india's top institute that is iri in different streams like entomology and nematology so these mentors will uh, mentor you for uh, securing a good rank in uh, icr jr uh, entomology 2024 So be with us and be with this agri addict team for getting a good rank uh, in ICR JR Entomology 2024 as well as to get a good get admission in India's top institutes for the agricultural entomology like IRI uh, and others. So uh, without wasting uh, your time, I am uh, going to start the class. So today's class will be on the uh, insect uh, wing. That is the continuation of the uh, part one. So in the part one, mostly I have covered the types of insect wings and what are the structures of the insect wing and what the what are the regions of the insect wing. So in the second class here, I am uh, uh, going to discuss about the wing coupling mechanism and mechanism of flight, basically. So first thing, what is the wing coupling mechanism? What is what do you mean by coupling? Coupling means joining of two structures. So uh, so for the wing coupling means what? you know there are the two types of uh, two wings two wings one is four wing another is hind wing so when the four wing is uh, attached to the hind wing by some linking structure that is called wing coupling mechanism so i will i will show you one diagram here this is the four wing this is the hind wing so if this four wing and the hind wing are connected to each other or jointed to each other by some linking structures then that is called as wing coupling mechanism okay so there are uh, mostly four different types of wing coupling mechanism one is uh, one is amplexiform another is hemolate then is frenet and jugget so what do you mean by amplexiform amplexiform means there is no linking structures no linking structure means there is no coupling but why it is called as coupling because here the it look like a coupling but there is no coupling that means it, it is a simple overlapping so here in this uh, picture in the wings of the butterfly you see this is the four wing this is the four wing and uh, this is the hind wing so without any linking structures they are just overlapped by each other and this overlapping is called as amplexiform so if the question will arise in which type of wing coupling mechanism the linking structure is absent that is the amplexiform and the example is the butterfly okay uh, how if you will notice uh, if you are catching one butterfly and if you are separating the four wing and hind wing it will be easily separated because there is no coupling structure there is no linking structure but uh, if you will go for any honey bee then there will be some difficult you will get some difficulties you will feel some difficulties for separating that uh, four wing and, and hind wing because you will get some linking structure some hook like structures are there so i will tell you in the next time so this is the hamulet Hamulet means what is hamuli. So remember one thing. I will tell you one trick. One is the hamulet. Another is the frenet. Another is the jugget. Why these names are called as like this hamulet, frenet, and jugget? Because on the basis of the name of the linking structure. So for the hamulet uh, coupling mechanism, the linking structure is called uh, hamuli. For the frenet, it is called frenulum, and another is also called as retinaculum or catch. I will tell you in the next slide in details. Then jugum, jugget, that is called jugum. So one trick I will tell you here for this hemulate and frenet, the linking structure is originated from hind wing, but for the jugget, the linking structure that is jugum is originated from the fore wing. This is the exception. That is jugum. all the linking structures are originated from the hind wing except jugum jugum is for juget so here you what you see hamuli so a row of small hooks in the coastal margin of the hind wing you see here this is the hind wing this is the fore wing 
so some hooks like structure on the coastal margin coast why coastal margin because this is the anterior margin so how it will be overlapped the anterior part of the forewing and anterior part of the hind wing and the posterior part of the forewing will be copulated that's why it's called coupling mechanism so here this uh, hemuli this is the originated from the hind wing that is a hook like structure and it is engaged the fold of the posterior area of the forewing okay you see this is the anterior part of the hind wing this is the posterior part of the forewing and both will be copulated or both will be interlinked example is hymenoptera how will remember hymenoptera that is hamulate that means h h means h for hymenoptera and commonly you just remember that is honey bee or bees okay second thing is frenet third thing is frenet frenet means i have told you a coupling structure that is called frenulum and this frenulum is originated from hind wing another structure is called retina coulomb or that is called as a catch that is a originated from the forewing so this a frenet type of coupling mechanism will happen when the frenulum that is originated from the hind wing and the retinaculum that is originated from the forewing will be coupled each other will be linked with each other okay so there are two types of frenets one is male frenet another is female frenet i will tell you one trick here to remember easily that is female for f male for m okay you just reverse it you take it m this is s okay you have reversed okay this female frenet that means this is multiple male frenet that means that is singular you, you may be confused what is multiple what is single that means the multiple hair structures and this is the single stout structures oh, what these are these are the linking structures that means in case of a female frenet both the frenulum both the structure both the linking structure that is frenulum and retinaculum are multiple in nature that means more than one but in case of male frenet both the retinaculum and frenulum uh, frenulum are single in structure that is only single you see here it is the female one this is multiple here two here i have shown the two it may be three it may be four here also so much that's why this is called as multiple hair structures but in case of a male only you see only single structure this is also single this is also a single so you have to just remember by this trick otherwise if you will get some good uh, uh, tricks also you can remember okay so you will see frenulum is the multiple stout pistils this is the multiple stout pistils originated from the coastal vein you have to remember this and interlocks with the retinaculum retinaculum is from the forewing this is also patch of hairs you see this is the patch of hairs and that is originated from the cubital cubital forewing okay then female that is male frenet that is single stout curved frenulum this is frenulum this is single stout curved and retinaculum that is a subcostal origin of the forewing this is also single stout this is also single stout okay both are curving in nature and both are single in nature and what is jugum jugum i have told you this is a lobe like structure that is originated from the forewing this is exception all are originated from the hind wing only the jugum is originated from the forewing here you see this is the forewing part that is a attached to the coastal margin of the hind wing this is coast so this is the lobe like structure and this is the coastal margin of the hind wing so this is called as a jugum and that is originated from the four wing this is the hind wing example is the happy led moth how to remember j is there near bilateral is what h so j for jugum s for happy led for the frenet how you know f for frenet f for f food sucking moth h for a hamulet h for hymenoptera it is b so you have to remember like this in entomology so many things to remember just you have to make some good tricks then only in the exam uh, you will get uh, suddenly that idea okay okay i remember that one that's why i got this answer like this if you will try to mug up everything then it it won't be possible okay try to understand something and try to un, uh, remember something by the good tricks then only you will get uh, some uh, uh, <coughs> easy uh, methods to understand and also memorizing everything and here i have uh, i have tabulated everything in a good in a table so first is amplexifer it is a hinding structure is nil i have told you Pouring also nil, that means no linking structure. Example is butterfly. Here see. 
then is the hemulet that is the hemuli that is called hindwing structure coring is nothing is there h for hemuli h for hymenoptera i have told you then frenet frenulum and retinaculum here also frenulum retinaculum here also frenulum retinaculum f that means it should be reversed that's m that means a multiple multiple stout bristles that is costal origin that is the subcostal that is cubitus origin okay and here you see frenulum this is single that means single stout structure this is costal origin and the retinaculum is the subcostal origin just you have to remember always the frenulum should be from the costal origin only the retinaculum place is different in case of male frenet the retinaculum is from subcosta in case of female frenet the retinaculum is from the cubitus okay then you get you get means here i have just uh, incorporated very in a wrong manner in case of hind wing there is a kneel no in case of fore wing that is jugum is there okay i will correct it in the notes mistaken i have put okay jugum is present in case of fore wing example is happy led moth i have told you j for jugum nearby letter is h that means happy led moth okay then what is wing sclerites wings uh, from the <coughs> short question point of view it's very important wing sclerites is otherwise called as teralia you remember it's teralia there are uh, five types of teralia or five wing based sclerites one is tegula it is a hair structure then axillary cord then axillaries in median pair in humeral or axillary pairs okay and axillaries are of different types first axillary second axillary third axillary fourth axillary and i have also shown this scra because the question will come from this region only the first axillary is originated from which vein that is the most important question the first axillary is originated from the subcostal vein the second axillary is originated from the radial vein third axillary is uh, originated from the anal vein and fourth axillary till now it is not recognized properly only in case of hymenopteran and some other insect it is found otherwise it is not uh, that much developed okay and another uh, important question what is the nature of veins it may be convex in nature it may be convex concave in nature so i will i will tell you one uh, <coughs> small trick in the previous class i have told you what are, what are the different types of veins in case of uh, uh, wings so in the serial manner you just tell me first first is costa then subcosta then radius then radio sectoral then medial then cubitus then anal this median medial anterior then median posterior this is cubital anterior or cu1 this is cubital posterior or cu2 so this in in sequence manner that is s sc r rs ma mp cu a cu p anal this all these things you just uh, arrange in a wave manner okay that means here you have put sc then down s sc r r s m a m p c u 1 c u 2 anal so from this picture you can know that uh, this is the convex part this is the concave part this is the convex part this is the concave part this is the convex part this is concave part if question will arise what is the nature of anterior medial vein that means anterior medial means that is the convex what is the nature of radio sectoral this is concave in nature what is the nature of posta postal vein that is the convex in nature so uh, i told you this trick you just make a wave and this arrange the all the uh, veins in a serial manner and uh, whatever the place it is you just imagine this is this is a um, convex or concave then only you can answer it properly then what is the uh, structural sclerites of doing i have told you uh, different types that is tegula axillary cords axillaries all the things i will tell you in a detailed manner here i have told you the tegula is a chitinous hair structure this is a chitinous hair structure and main important thing where it is present one is in lepidoptera and another is in hymenoptera exam point of view what is very important what is the origin where it is ne placed nearby it is the, from the costal vein this is very important the tegula lies at the base of the costal vein you see this is the tegula this is the chitinous hair structure this is the hair structure and near to this costal vein this is the costal vein now so near to this costal vein this tegula is present this is the important questions okay from exam point of view it is important 
then as the axillary cord here you see axillary cord so from this, this just try to imagine this picture put the picture in your mind then only nothing will be very nothing will be difficult for you just imagine in this picture and answer all the things this is axillary cord okay here see axillary cord so near to axillary cord which veins are very near, nearby this anal veins na anal veins are not because these are very far these anal veins are very near so this axillary cord is placed nearby the anal veins that is a1 a2 and a3 so it is a lobe like structure laying closely with the anal margin from exam point of view this is important means what is the origin or where it is placed and this is also called as articular membrane that is in a very ligament in nature okay so uh, third thing is axillary so first axillary second axillary third axillary so <clears throat> i have told you the first axillary means the subcosta origin second axillary radial origin third axillary anal origin and it is called exception exception means i have told you it is only found in orthoptera and hymenoptera so from this picture i will uh, describe all the things so you see first axillary lies at the base of the subcostal vein this is the this is the first axillary you see this is the first axillary this first axillary is near to the subcostal vein you see subcostal vein okay and articular is the anterior nodal process this is the anterior nodal process what is the anterior nodal process what is the posterior nodal process what is that when i have told you that sclerites of thorax i have i have told you you see this is the wing so when these wings two wings are attached to the thorax at two particular points that is called as anterior nodal process or posterior nodal process so the above part is called as anterior nodal process and this is posterior nodal process so these are the structures one is this another is this okay so these two structures are called anterior nodal nodal processes anterior nodal process and posterior nodal process okay so uh, you have to remember the first axillary is related to the anterior nodal process. So ANP means first axillary. PNP means third axillary. So exam point of view, it's very important. Which axillary is attached to the posterior nodal process? That is third axillary. Which axillary is related to the anterior nodal process? That is the first axillary. Okay. And the second axillary is called radial in nature, radial vein. Then you see this is the second. And this is the radial vein, so that's why it's called radial. Okay, so articular is the first primary axillary. axillary that means this is attached to this one, and the process the pleuron to and with the wing process, pleuron distal. So this is the attached to this flexor muscles, it is the wing process. Okay, flexor muscles. Then third axillary, I have told you important is PNP. Then what is fourth axillary? You have to remember only the orthoptera and hymenoptera dispersion. It also articulates the PNP proximally and third axillary distal. You see here. This is the fourth axillary. So in this case of fourth axillary, first is PNP attached to PNP and third axillary. But only from exam point of view, it is important that where it is present. One is orthoptera and one is the hymenoptera. Then median pads, two types of median pads are there. One is the first median pad and the second median pad. You see here. This is the first median pair, sorry, and this is second median pair, okay. So, what the first median pair associated with the medio cubitus and first anal pain? This is medial, cubital, and what is anal, okay. So, this first plate, this is the first plate, this is the second plate. So, first medial pair is attached to the medio cubital and anal pain. And the second blood is associated with the third axillary. You see, this is the second now. So this is attached to the third axillary. And uh, both these are uh, separated by oblique membrane. Here one uh, line is there now. This line is called as oblique membrane. This is called as oblique membrane. That means if question will arise, the, both the median pads are separated by dash membrane. Separated by dash. That is called as oblique membrane. That is called as oblique membrane okay then what is the humeral or axillary pads this, this is actually not important but i will tell you this is a very there are a, a double membrane structure axillary pads axillary plates are a double membrane structure you should remember these things 
don't go so details otherwise you will be confused okay this is a double membrane structure just important this one okay and this is important question important, important part flight muscles so some muscles uh, in the first class i have told you there are different types of muscles uh, that is uh, uh, involved in for the mechanism of flight so these flight muscles are two types one is direct uh, muscles and another indirect muscles so uh, what is what do you mean by direct and indirect you are my direct friend that means i am in touch with you you are my indirect friend that means you are a friend of my friend that means i am not uh, in touch with you i may contact you i may not contact you for so many days but my my direct friend means i may contact immediately same thing here if something is direct in touch direct in touch that is called as a direct muscles or directly attached if something is not directly attached that is called as indirect muscles so what is what is the definition of indirect muscles so the muscles that are not attached to the wing base that means in case of this muscle that are not attached to wing, wing base directly that is called as a indirect muscles what is the direct muscles the muscle attached to the wing base okay so what are the what are the different types of uh, indirect muscles one is the dorsal ventral muscle or tergosternal muscle and uh, dorsal longitudinal muscles dorsal means what targum ventral means what sternum so dorsal ventral muscle is, muscle is called as a targosternal muscle another is a longitudinal muscle that is called a dorsal longitudinal muscle i will explain in the later in the next slides don't worry okay another thing is a direct muscles direct muscles are uh, different types that is extension muscles accessory muscles and flexor muscles this extension muscles are of two types one is the anterior extension and posterior extension and the anterior extension are two types of first anterior and second anterior so from this tree diagram what you what the main important question they will ask what are the direct and what are the different uh, indirect muscles if the question will arise what are the indirect muscles that is dorsal ventral or tergosternal muscle and the dorsal longitudinal muscles what are the direct muscles that is the extensor muscles or accessory indirect muscle and the flexor muscle just remember these things so these are the muscle type this is muscle type this is the origin of the muscle and that is uh, where it is inserted to you see that is the first anterior extensor muscle that is the type of indirect or direct type direct muscles so this is the epistern number stener origin and ended into the basal sclerite you see here this is the tegula this is the root you see on it where is it okay this is tegula this is the hair structure okay this is in order the third axillary i have told you before this is the ventral sclerite is subalar sclerite we see so these lines these lines are called as a muscles you see all these lines are called as muscles okay so why these lines are directly attached to the what wing bases that's why it is called as a direct muscles so first is first anterior extensor muscle where is anterior extensor muscle you see this is the anterior extensor muscles so where it is attached to that is the basal sclerite you this this is basal sclerite and epistermal muscle this is the epistermum so if question arises what is the first anterior extensor muscle which is started from this region and ended with this region starting point is the epistermum ending point is basal basilar sclerite so only epistermum and basilar sclerite so uh, if you, if you can remember this picture in your mind then it's okay if you will not able to remember this picture in mind just mark up okay because those who are able to remind this picture in your mind then it will be very useful and it will be very easy to remember okay otherwise you just mark up then what is second uh, second anterior extensor muscle you see here second anterior extensor muscle okay this one so what is this is the, this is rim like structure this is coxal rim why coxal rim in case of leg what are the different parts coxa trochanter so that coxa is present in a rim like structure in a socket like structure that is called as coxal rim so this uh, second anterior extensor muscle is originated from the, this coxal rim and same thing it is also ended to the basilar sclerite so this is the basilar sclerite so this basilar sclerite is the ending point of both anterior extensor muscles 
that is both the past anterior and second anterior extensor muscles. Then another is posterior extensor muscle, you see here, this one posterior extensor muscle. So this is also originated from this coxal rim or not, let us say coxal rim, but this is a, what, ended to the subvalar sclerite, subvalar sclerite, this is subvalar sclerite. Both uh, anterior extensor muscles are ended with the basal sclerites, but the posterior extensor muscle is uh, ended with the subvalar sclerites. Then what is the flexor muscles? You see here flexor muscle. This is flexor muscle. The pleural ridge or pleural suture and third axillary sclerites. You see, this is called as a pleural suture. Suture, suture means what? Some invagination structure, some gap-like structure. So this pleural, this is originated from the pleural suture and ended with the third axillary okay and this is the accessory indirect muscle this is not important that much no need to remember okay so uh, mechanism of flight <coughs> first two lines are very important the flight of an insect is based upon bernoulli's principle of aerodynamics this is aerodynamics okay then what is the stigma very very important v v i n t very very important that is called a dense discolored part of the coastal margin of the wing usually end at the radius what is the this is a dense discolored part of the coastal origin of the coastal margin of the wing and end in of the end of, at the end of the radius and what is the function of this stigma actually stigma is the uh, functional for the aerodynamics so this is the aerodynamics in function okay so mostly this flight is based on the principle of Bernoulli's principle that is for the aerodynamics and the part that is responsible for the aerodynamics function that is called a stigma which is a very dense and discolored part of the coastal margin of the wing which end at the radius. So uh, there are two types of uh, motions that one is the elevation, elevator or upward motion another is depression or the downward motion. So one insect is going upward that means the elevation, elevator or upward if the it's going down that is called depression or the downward so how how this muscles will act how these muscles will act for this downward and upward motion mostly for the downward and the upward motion indirect muscles are functional indirect muscle means there are two types of indirect muscles i have told you in the previous slide one is the dorsal ventral or turbosternal muscle another is the dorsal longitudinal muscle so how they will function i will explain in this slide so first thing is the elevator or the upward motion what do you know elevator upward motion the contraction of the dorso ventral or turbosternal muscles so these two pictures this is just a imaginary picture for the explanation purpose this is not the actual picture okay so i will explain in this picture and you just try to remember this is the targum this is the sternum. Targum means what? Targum means I have told you dorsal. Sorry. Targum means what? Dorsal. And uh, ventral means what? Sternum. Okay. So, the relaxation of the dorsal longitudinal muscle. What is the contraction of? Uh, what? Uh, this one is the what? Longi. This is long, long, long muscles. Na? You see here, this is a long muscle, longitudinal muscle. That is dorsal longitudinal muscle. These are two points. These two points are called as a dorso ventral muscle. Dorso ventral. Okay. So, what will happen when you see this is the what? relaxation of a dorsal longitudinal muscle this in this will relax the, the shape of the targum becomes concave shape you see here i, I am telling you, you see first thing Uh, sorry, I have done one mistake. Sorry, you see here. I, I, I have done one mistake. I rectify it. You see here. This one and this one. Okay. 
you see actually what is this is the targum this is what is this this is sternum so these muscles are attached at one point to targum and another point to sternum so this is the dorsal this is the ventral so this muscle is called as not longitudinal muscle i have did mistake here this is not longitudinal muscle this is the dorso ventral muscle dorso ventral muscle and this is only near to the sternum that's why it's called only dorsal longitudinal muscle dorsal longitudinal muscles okay dorsal longitudinal muscle so here also you see this muscle is attached to one part is sternum another is sternum so dorso ventral muscle or the targo sternal muscle this is dorso ventral muscle or the targo sternal muscle and these two points are only near to the sternum or dorsum that is called a dorso longitudinal muscle okay so what will happen for the elevation elevation or upward motion we have to focus the function wing should be in upward motion wing should be in upward motion that's why it is called as elevation or upward motion same thing in for the depression or downward motion the wing should be in a downward motion so you just you should you just imagine the spring like structure if we will pull this structure downward then what will happen the wing will automatically go upward that means if we will pull this structure this dorsal if we will pull this dorsal ventral muscle downward then wing will be upward same thing same thing for the depression when we will relax this dorsal ventral muscle the wing will be also relaxed to be downward so you have to remember like this the contraction of dorsal ventral you you will just uh, you will just pull that means you have to contract this contract of dorsal ventral muscle then that is opposite for the longitudinal muscle that is the relaxation of longitudinal muscle then what will happen the shape if you are pulling that means that uh, uh, the plate that uh, targum plate will be pulled down that means it will become the concave shape same thing here what will happen when you are relaxing the dorsal ventral muscle it will become the convex shape okay so shape of the targum become the concave and but here the shape of the targum become the convex shape. so what will happen so due to uh, concave shape what will be the pulling downward of the targum and the wing articulation will be upward and here also wing articulation will be downward i will tell you in the detail in the next here to see this and this okay so this is the muscle okay this is also a muscle for this is for upward this is for the downward so how will make upward upward means first this is the what this is dorsal ventral muscle this is the dorsal dorsal longitudinal muscle so this is the originally plane this is original state this is also original state but for the wing for moving the wing upward this is the original wing okay this is also original wing, original position so we have to make uh, what it should be uh, it should be go up it should also go up how it will go up if it will, it will pull down it that means uh, we have to pull it down then only it will go upward like this we have to pull it to push it then only it will become like this okay so how how will pull down that means we have to contract we have to contract this muscle and we have to relax this muscle we have that means contract dorsal ventral muscle relax dorsal longitudinal muscle then this should be convex concave the targum should be concave then only it will it will upward motion same thing here what will happen it should be relax or not that means dorsal ventral muscle should be relax then dorsal longitudinal muscle should be contract then what will it the targum should be convex remember you remember not if any doubt you can ask me in the whatsapp or in uh, uh, the online classes then i will tell you again also so first thing you have to this is the plane this is the plane targum we have to move the wing upward that means what we will do we have to move it down for down purpose what will do that uh, dorsal ventral muscle should be contracted downward that means the relaxation of the dorsal longitudinal muscle same thing here for the downward motion what will do 
we have to move it upward that means we have to relax dorsoventral muscle and we have to contract the longitudinal muscle so this is the mechanism of flight if you have any doubt then you can ask me in the online that discussion class or uh, you know whatsapp group i will try to clarify everything uh, due to network problem only i am taking the class in a offline mode in a recorded class and i am putting the youtube um, but you just go through this uh, um, classes and if you have doubt you can ask me uh, without without any hesitation i will try to clarify everything so thank you for um, thank you for your patience thank you and uh, another user i will share some mock test also so you just go through that mock test and uh, and uh, whatever i am teaching you just try to note down everything by just simply listening you will not get anything you have to just practice again and again and whatever the points you have to remember just make your own tricks otherwise you just follow my tricks and uh, whatever as per your convenience you try to remember everything and uh, do practice uh, again and again for the mock test and also uh, for the mcqs also then only uh, you, are, you you will uh, get some confidence for attending questions so by this i will like to conclude this class thank you so much